morning, children of God. Welcome to worship. And a special welcome to our guests. We have coffee hour today after church. And thank you, Bonnie and Al, for providing the coffee hour downstairs in the uh, fellowship hall. Uh, we have community dinner. I'm grateful to Kathy Knox for organizing it. Uh, we need uh, volunteers to help uh, preparing the sandwiches and later to serve the sandwiches at 3.30 at Presbyterian Church. I'm gonna participate in both. But I promise you, on behalf of Judy Nikolai, that next time when we receive the schedule for community dinner, we will make sure that we do not serve every month or twice a month. That was a mistake from the person who handled the community dinner before Judy, called, Judy Nikolai. Um, our friend Forrest, Gunderson, Joy Karnas' father, is very sick and he was admitted to the ICU, but thank God he moved from the ICU. He is 101 years old. God bless him. I pray that I will, I will not live that long. But I pray for uh, Joy. She is really, really tired. Um, sandwiches, and well, uh, and the last announcement is going is going to be shared with you by our president. Please come. He looks great today. I was hiding downstairs videotaping, so but she asked me to talk about next week's uh, congregational meeting. I'm not calling it an annual meeting or anything. We can hear you. Oh, did you turn? Did you turn? Did I turn that off? Is it? Okay. No, it's working, but you can't hear me. Do I have to talk up louder? Or yeah. Use another. Maybe that one. Yeah, yeah, here, here's better. Is this one better? Yeah, sure. Mr. President. Oh, yeah. Does that sound better? Oh, I can even hear myself. I don't know if I want to do that. But the reports and that and the, and the agenda are out on the table back there. We had 30, 30 copies printed up and we'll have more available at the meeting if we have. The process that we decided to go through was we, we offered absentee ballots for those that couldn't make the meeting and they will count towards quorum then and we mailed out five of them, I believe it was, on, on Friday, because the deadline was Thursday the 15th to get an absentee ballot. And that went out, yeah, I don't think that's attached here, but we have some officers to elect. Uh, you want me to run through those? And if I get somebody's name wrong, that's why I had to run out to the car this morning. Running for president is Adam Dady. Yay! <laughs> We have no one for vice president, so that can be a right in any of you that wish to serve as vice president of the congregation can just put your name in there and we'll accept that. I nominate Azali for vice president. Our, uh, uh oh. We'll do that at the annual meeting. Okay. And then uh, re remaining treasurer, uh, Matt Mutson. Yay. The secretary, Patty Bushy. Yes. Financial secretary, Jane Riley Smith. And then. There's no one for nominating committee, but we'll take care of that at the, at the annual meeting. And then Kathy Knox for social concerns and Sally yes. Cinco Reinerson for the properties committee. And there are a lot of opens on there. We're looking for representative of the Crossways, Hobby Home, Synod Assembly. Um, I believe I was to be, was I? Was yes. I in the Greater Wausau Christian Services? You nominated yourself, but you are not there. Oh, okay. You get me on the ballot though? I, I would try my best. <laughs> okay. So that came out of the, the church council meeting. I'll let you have that back again. But I'd encourage you, we're gonna, 
gonna, yeah, I'm, you're not supposed to say gonna, right? There's, it's, just, it's just like saying ain't. In my old days, it was, it, they're ain'ting the word. But anyway, we're encouraging you to attend and vote on those issues. And then the agenda is inside. And I did add to that agenda that there will be, well, let me see. There, there will be a motion to approve all of the past actions of the church councils because we've missed two of our meetings, two of our semi-annuals. We didn't have a January meeting, we didn't have a May meeting. So we have a lot of work to discuss and, and take care of and also discuss future plans for the church. So I'm looking forward to hosting you at the, at the congregational meeting next Sunday and we will do it right after the service. We, you don't have to leave and then, and then we'll have coffee and cookies after that or maybe even some homemade cake. I'll see if I can bake a cake for tomorrow next week. Yes. So have a great week. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Bob. Uh, just I need you to know that this report is very important to read. And the best time to read it is it during my sermon. Yes? Thank you. Uh, is there any announcement? Please say it now or keep it for later. No announcements. All right. Uh, let us now prepare ourselves to celebrate the presence of God among us. Please stand if you are able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracle, miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Let us pray. O heavenly King, the Comforter, the Spirit of Truth, who art in all places and fills all things, treasury of blessings and giver of life, come and dwell in us, cleanse us from every stain, and save our souls, O gracious Lord. Amen. Drawn to Jesus Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin, trusting in God's forgiveness and grace. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question the ways when they differ from the ways of the world we like We put our trust in mortals rather than trusting in you and mortal God. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and lead us from life to the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and, nur and nurtured. By Jesus, the workers of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy, and you are forgiven and loved in, into abundant life. Rejoice, dear children of God, your sins are totally forgiven. Amen. Let us say the... Uh, him, the church, one foundation.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Thank you. Let us sing glory to God in the highest. Let us pray in unison. O oh God, powerful and compassionate, you shepherd your people, faithfully feeding and protecting us. Heal each of us and make us a whole people that we may embody the justice and peace of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. The first reading is from 2 Samuel, chapter 7, verse 1 through 14. Instead of David building a house for God, God promises to establish David's house forever. Centuries later, after the Babylonian exile, no king sat on the throne. Even then, however, the people of Israel remembered this promise and continued to hope for a king, the Messiah, God's anointed. Here begins the reading. Now when the king was settled in his house and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, see now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, go do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night, the word of the Lord came to Nathan. Go and tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, <clears throat> excuse me, are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day, but I have been moving around, about in a tent and a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among, for all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, to be prince over my people Israel, and I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you, and I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and I will plant them, 
so that they may live in their own place and be disturbed no more. And evildoers shall afflict them no more, as formerly. From that time that I appointed judges over my people Israel, I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. When your days are fulfilled and you lie down with your ancestors, I will raise up your offspring after you. Who shall come forth from your body, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from the book of Ephesians, chapter 2, verses 11 through 22. The author of this letter reminds his audience that originally there were no part of God's chosen people. Though Jesus' death, however, they are included in God's household of faith, whose cornerstone is Jesus Christ. Remember that at one time you Gentiles by birth called the uncircumcision by those who are called the circumcision, a physical circumcision made in the flesh by human hands. Remember that you were at that time without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ, for he is our peace. In his flesh he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall, that is, the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances that he might create in himself one new humanity in place of the two, thus making peace, and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross, thus putting to death that hostility through it. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. For though him, both of us, have access to one spirit of the Father, so then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you are built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. Word of God, word of life. Thanks Thanks be to God. Please stand if you are able to welcome the gospel. Alleluia! My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. Alleluia! The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the sixth chapter. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the port to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them going and recognized them. And they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had 
compassion for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. When they had crossed over, they came to land, to land at Gennesaret and moored the boat. When they got out of the boat, people at once recognized him and rushed about that whole region and began to bring the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went, into villages or cities or farms, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch even the fringe of his clock. And all who touched it were healed. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ. Amen. Please be seated. Grace and peace to you from God the Father and Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. For the first time last week, I attended the confirmation camp, camp uh, with Emily and Grace Callio at Way Past Camp, Crossways. The camp is like small cabins. We did not camp in tents. Nowadays, people are interested more in RVs, uh, much more than tents. Camping sites are converted, some of them are converted to resorts. Tent is replaced with RV and RV is replaced with resort because it is more prestigious and more comfortable. If you camp in a tent, you are more uh, open to the nature around you and you are more accessible. But if you camp in a V, that might not be the same, right? Those of you who camp in a V or camp in a tent know the difference. For many, many years, God camped in a tent. God enjoys camping in tents because God is more accessible and God likes to be closer to us. God does not like to be restricted to buildings. King David wanted to move God or the Ark of the Covenant from a tent to a house or a temple. And when the temple was built, there was like a place called Holy of Holies. No one was allowed to go there but the high priest. And he went there once a year during the day of Kippur, the day of repentance or the day of mourning. So not everybody was able to have access to Ark of God, which means no one was allowed to have access to God but the high priest. So David wanted to build a house for God. We might want to praise David for building a house similar to the one he himself has settled, but the house for God. It seems pious and holy idea at first glance, right? It is wonderful to build a house to God. Why shouldn't, why shouldn't God, the king of kings, be treated at least as well as the royal of the land, right? Building a temple would make ancient Israel like the other nations, and that's what they wanted when they voted to have a king. They wanted to be 
like other nations. Do you know, David represents all of us. That includes me, your pastor. Our human tendency, tend, tendency, tendency to assume, God, to assume God wants what human wants. So we do for God what we would want. It is an inversion of Imago Dei, the image of God. God is made in our image, not the other way around in this inversion. I would like to live in a house, comfortable house. So I assume that God wants the same. I want to use silver in my home, not me, Naveen. Some of us want to have silver. So we have silver uh, sets for Holy Communion. So we think that God wants what we want for ourselves. Some churches have the cloth made of gold, not wood. And the members of that church are very poor. The chalice, the cup of Holy Communion is made of gold while people are starving and hungry. God is not interested in a permanent structure. I believe that for four reasons. God asks David through the prophet Nathan, wherever I have moved, moved about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel saying, why have you not built me a house of cedar? It has never been God's, God's desire to have a house of cedar or of stone. Second, to some in Israel, building a temple may have been seen to be an attempt to control God or to limit God's freedom. God speaks through the prophet Isaiah when the Israelites after the exile wanted to build a second temple after the one that was destroyed. God says, heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. What is the house that you would build for me? Third, the God of tents meets us in buildings but is not constra constrained in them or by them. God is not interested in permanent structure. Fourth, there is also the problem that a temple built by a king might lead the temple establishment to endorse all the king's policies. In an unhealthy mixture, mixture of church and state. That danger becomes clear in the northern kingdom when Amos is rebuked by the, king, by the king's priest, Amaziah. King, the priest told Amos, this sanctuary belongs to the king. Go and prophesy in another place and make a living. And the best example you can find about the mixture between the church and the state, the best example you can see in Russia and Greece. My friends, God does not want David to build a house for God, but God said, okay, you build it, but not you. Your son will build the house for me. 
Instead, I'm going to bless you and bless your descendants. Why does God not want David to build a house for God's name? But God wants Solomon to do that. The book of Samuel does not tell us the, the answer. But the book of 2 Kings and 1 Chronicles tells us why. Solomon, King Solomon, and addressed the question of why David could not build the temple, suggesting that David was too busy to build a temple because of his many wars. The book of Chronicles builds on that suggesti suggesti suggestions, suggestion by stating that David had shed too many blood in his wars. Solomon, on the other hand, was a man of peace to whom God had given rest from all his enemies. The reading from Samuel today is about the joy of settling into a home and making a home for God. But also remember that God likes camping among us. Wherever we are, there is no place we can go from God's presence, the psalmist declared in Psalm 139. Last Monday, the church council met for, to prepare for the annual meeting. It will take place, as you know, next Sunday. We discussed the building of our church here. We discussed how this building demands lots and lots of work. Bob Henning suggested, he had just an idea, just an idea. Idea that to sell this, land, this church and move to a smaller church because this church is too big for our uh, congrega small congregation and demands lots of work. It's, again, it's an idea. I am aware that not all of us are interested in this idea because we are attached to, to this building. Moving to new building might be hard for us. But my question for you, we, when we closed our church during the pandemic, did you feel that God, did you feel that Jesus Christ left you? Raise your hand if you say yes. Even when Jack and I prepared video for worship, you can access that, you could, you have, you still can access the videos on YouTube and TV. But some of you was not interested in what, on in watching the worship service on TV. Those of you who did not like to, worship, to watch the worship online, did you feel that God or Jesus left you? No. That's great. Do you know that the church is not something you go to. It is something you are. You are the church. If we meet in a park or at a lake, sure, we are the church and we still can worship God. The Apostle Paul asks the church of Corinth 
Don't you know that you, you, yourselves, are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in your midst? So do you know that you are the temple of God? And wherever you go, you are the temple. And wherever you go, Christ is with you. Jesus Christ, our Lord, is all around and ever present within you. You are the church, not this building. And so wherever you find yourself on Sunday morning, that ground is holy. If you find yourself and unable to come to church and you want to stay in your kitchen, in your garden, your kitchen, your garden, garden is holy. If for any reason Emmanuel moves to another building, Jesus will move with us and will continue to shower us his, with his mercy, his kindness, and his love. Jesus Christ is always close by and easily accessible. Remember, your faith is based on Jesus Christ. Your faith should not be based on this building because Christ is way bigger than this building. And even though he is bigger than this building, Christ lives in you. God prefers to live in your heart rather than this building. However, when we gather here, Christ is present and he shall ever be. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please, my friends, open your hymnal to hymnal number 676. Lord, speak to us that we may speak. Let us come before the triune God in prayer. After each petition, respond with, your mercy is great. 
Tend your church, O God. Encourage bishops, pastors, and deacons in their proclamation of the gospel. Raise up new leaders and encourage those pursuing a call to ministry. Embolden all the baptized to embody your love and justice. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. great. Restore your creation, O God. Sustain croplands and pastures and safeguard all farm animals and livestock. Preserve lakes, rivers, and streams that offer refreshment. Revive lands recovering from natural disasters and protect coastlands threatened by rising oceans. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. great. Reconcile the nations, O God. Break down the dividing walls that make us strangers to one another and unite us as one human family. Equip leaders to deal wisely with conflict and guide diplomats who seek peaceful solutions. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Heal your people, O God. Look with compassion on immigrants, exiles, and all who are afraid or feel lost. Give rest to those who are weary, comfort to those who are grieving, and recovery to those who are ill. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Nourish this congregation, O God. Prepare a table where we receive food for our hungering spirits. Renew our commitment to provide for one another and revitalize our ministries of feeding and nurturing hungry neighbors. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for Margaret Johnson and for all those who woke this morning to the loneliness of bereavement, the empty bed or chair, an unaccustomed quietness, a life now incomplete. May they know your presence in the stillness of this day and through the love of friends who offer their condolences. And in the darker moments, may they reach out to hold your hand and feel the warmth of the one who has already passed from death to life, to welcome others into God's kingdom. Jesus Christ, hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Almighty God, creator and preserver of our world, we ask you to hear our humble prayers for all those afflicted by the devastating floodwaters throughout Germany and Belgium. We pray for those still threatened by flood in city and rural areas, protect both life and property. In your mercy, bring relief to all afflicted areas. We pray for the sick and injured, for the homeless, for the bereaved, and for those still searching for loved ones in this great tragedy. Have compassion, merciful Lord, in the midst of their profound suffering, comforting and relieving them according to their needs. Through the generosity of governments and individuals across Germany and Belgium, provide a future for those who present present circumstances are marked by loss and desperation. And by your gracious hand, rebuild communities where men, women, and children are nurtured with care and love. And turn the hearts of all to you, the God of all comfort. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You lead us home, O God. We give thanks for all who have died, now citizens with the saints, especially Leroy Johnson and Reverend Norm Winterhoff. As you have received them into your heavenly home, so welcome all of us to dwell in your house forever. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We left these and all our prayers to you, O God, confident in the promise of your saving love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please be seated, and thank you for sending your offering to the church. The, um, you are welcome to leave your offering as you are leaving or the church. Uh, the plate is outside on a table in the narthex. Uh, you are invited to open your hymnal to hymn number 849.
stand if you are able, and for the sake of the time, we will move to the Holy Communion, trusting that our Lord accepts our offerings. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant, and my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are those who are called to his banquet. I welcome volunteers to help in distributing the communion. Please be seated and let us sing the uh, Lamb of God. And uh, if anyone, the first one who receives communion and is willing to run the communion hymn, Please come and do so, otherwise use your hymnal. Thank you.
be unable May the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen your faith and give you the assurance of forgiveness and unite you with Jesus Christ and one another. Amen. Let us pray in unison. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask, as you have nourished us in this meal. Now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray, amen. And receive another blessing. May the Lord bless you. May the Holy Spirit ever dwells in you. May always feel the presence of God wherever you go. May continue to be the temple of God where people come and find rest and hope. May the holy angels protect you from, bo from both sides. And may the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit reside in your heart now and forever. And let us say... So now on our way rejoicing. You are the body of Christ raised up for the world. Go in peace, share the good news, and help Kathy Knox to make sandwiches for community dinner. And then later, serve the sandwiches. And if you can do this, say, I will, and I ask God to help me. If not, say, thanks be to God, and that is absolutely fine. Okay. Okay, go in peace. Thank you.